Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be memory work, review game, and at home ideas for CC Cycle 2 and week 14. So this week for math, we are starting with linear equivalence. And I am going to continue and pretty much keep everything the same way that we did it our first time through CC Cycle 2 and week 14 because I'm looking over it and really I liked it all. It was it all worked and I liked the songs. I did do some searching for some new ideas for a couple of the tunes, but uh, for the most part, we're going to keep things pretty much the same as when we went through it our first time through week 14. So for linear equivalence, we are learning about measurements. And so we will bring in a measuring tape and we'll just show what each of these things are up to as far as we can. So 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. A centimeter ends up being about the size of a kid's pinky. And so you get two and a half of those in there and that equals about the length of an inch. So we just kind of give these visuals. Then we have 12 inches equals a foot. Show them that. You can also talk about how that is also called a foot because it is about the size of a man's foot. And so uh, that's where we get the 12 inches. Okay, then the next one for 5,280 feet equals a mile. Uh, you can talk about a mile and how many times around the track that ends up being, just so they can get an idea for distance wise. And then a kilometer equals 5 eighths of a mile. So if you were to take one of those miles and spread it out or uh, divide it up into eights, it would be five of those. And so we sing this to the tune of Supercalifragilistic, and it sounds like this. 2.54 centimeters equals one inch, and 12 inches equals one foot. 5,280 feet equals one mile, and one kilometer equals five-eighths of a mile. And that is our tune and our demonstration for math. All right. For English, we're moving on to what is an adverb, and so we sing this to the tune of it's raining, it's pouring, and it sounds like this. An adverb modifies a verb, adjective, or another adverb and answers the question how, when, where, and why. An adverb modifies a verb, adjective, or another adverb and answers the question how, when, where, and why. And that is how we'll cover English. For history this week, we are learning about World War I leaders. So the first year that we went through this, I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and just make up some of these flags or these countries. And on the backs of them, I put the names of the leaders and where they're from. And then when we go through history, we'll start by just reading through the history statement, playing the history song that CC provides. And then as we're familiar with them, what we'll do as we introduce these places is I will put out a map and I'll have little pieces of clay on each of these countries. And then we will stick the flag and their leader into each location as we sing it in the song. And so that's kind of what we'll do for history is just use these flags, stick them in their locations. Once we have them in and they're all standing up on the map, then we'll take them out one at a time as we sing through it again. And so that'll get us through uh, many times going through the song and then also having a visual of where these places are where this is all Referring to if you want to keep things more simple than putting these flags on each of the locations of the map You could just draw these up on your board this week and just point to each of the flags for representing each of the countries as you get to it and in the song so that would be another way to simplify showing What we're talking about for history this week with World War one. All right so then for Latin, we are doing the first conjugation endings in present tense again. And so we are going to use our handy dandy present again. And what we do is we just pass that around in a circle as we sing the tune that CC provides for all of these conjugation endings. And the present is just a visual reminder that we're talking about present tense. And so if you want to, uh, it's also kind of fun. This you, to get one that has a cap that comes off, um, then you can put something fun inside the present. And then when you end on somebody, they get to open it up and either give out, I don't know, a lollipop or just something that kind of explodes, like little puff balls or the little foam squares for uh, counting manipulatives. Those are all fun ideas to make this a little bit more fun. So that is Latin. For timeline, 
we have Columbus, so we're doing a C for Columbus, sails to the Caribbean. And then we have the age of absolute monarch, so we're going to take our hands and lift them up, and like we're putting a big old crown on our head. Uh, before we get to age of absolute monarch, it does say circa 1500. So for 15, you take your hand like this, kind of wave towards yourself, and 100 is the letter C for century. And then after Age of Absolute Monarchs, it says circa 1500 to circa 1800. So you could do those motions too if you wanted to. Then we have Protestant Reformation. And so for Protestant Reformation, we just take our hands like this and this is the, this is the sign for R. And so we're symbolizing a reformation, a change. So R turning. And so we do this for Protestant Reformation. You can do a P before that to represent Protestant. So Protestant Reformation. Then we have Spanish conquistadors in the Americas. And for that, they were volunteer soldiers and explorers. So we're going to do the same sign for Spanish as last week, which is like the cape uh, that you wear for bull riding. So we're going to go like this. And then um, this for soldiers. And then when we say explorers in the Americas, we're going to go like we're exploring. For Calvin's Institute of the Christian Religion, what we're going to do is Calvin's Institute. So this is the sign for belief. Institute of the Christian Religion. And then we have Council of Trent. That's where the Catholic bishops met regarding the reformation of the church from within. And so we're going to do the sign for reformation again. So reformation and then the sign for within. So Council of Trent. Then we have the last one is Baroque period of the arts. That was a time of excessive decor. And so we're going to do like we're tying bows all over during that part. And that is all of our timeline for this week. Next, we have Baltic Europe. For Baltic Europe this week, we are going to keep the same tune that we did for Northern Europe last week, Northern European countries. This time we're moving over to Baltic European countries. And we have Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and Belarus. And it sounds like this. Baltic European countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Belarus. And that's how we'll cover all of our geography. Of course, we will point to all these locations on the map and always use fishy crackers or something like that. And then for science, we are going to be talking about what are the states of matter. There are lots of great visuals that you can find, like coloring sheets and things like that for states of matter on CC Connected. I will put a link for several of those that I think were good options that you could either use to draw up on your board or to have your kiddos color during review or just to give out this week or do at home. But um, we sing this to celebrate good times and it sounds like this. What are the states of matter? Solid, liquid, gas, plasma. And those are the hand motions we do. If you don't wanna do hand motions, you don't really have to. You could just sing the song um, and then have pictures up on your board that you draw for visuals this week. But again, it's what are the states of matter? solid liquid gas plasma and that is how we will cover all of our memory work this week for review we are going to probably play uh jenga the game of jenga and i just have written on the little pieces i got it at the dollar store i have written on each piece a different subject you can determine which week that you want to review obviously this week we're recovering week 13 and 14 and so you would determine which question you want to ask from each subject when that tile is pulled. So they would pull their tile and stay the subject before they put it back on top without letting it fall. And that's how we play Jenga. I also mix into some of those pieces just some really fun ideas like a quick dance party or doing some um, jumping jacks or making a silly face just so that you can add in some fun as you're reviewing the memory work. Uh, it kind of gets a lot of laughs out and it makes it fun to review all that we're learning too at the same time. Okay, so that is review. And for at home this week, we have our devotional that ties into our science lessons. This is Indescribable by Louis Giglio. Page 202 this week is all about the states of matter. It's called Water, Water Everywhere. 
and that applies to our science that we are learning this week, page 202. And then we have uh, Magic School Bus. They have an episode called Three and One. That's all about matter as well. It's season one, episode eight. And you could also watch a movie this week related to our memory work, Anastasia. Just research the real history and discuss that um, of the Russian Revolution. And then also uh, another movie that you could check out is Space Chimps. And that also has to do with the states of matter. Uh, it's rated G. And if you haven't yet, check out the link that I provided in my description of these memory work videos. There is a whole list of great movie ideas that relate to all of our memory work each week. And they change obviously per week depending on the different things that we're learning. Sometimes there's one movie, sometimes there's several. I did not create it and I don't, haven't watched all the movies, so I don't, I can't vouch for how great each of them are, but that is a suggestion if you're looking for a movie to watch with the fam this week regarding states of matter. So it's called Space Chimps. Okay, and let's see, for eating your geography this week, uh, we are learning about Baltic Europe, so we're learning about Lithuania, Estonia, and all those areas for geography. And so some of the most popular meals in that area would be dumplings, beet soup, super yummy. Uh, my mother loves to make beet soup and we love it. It's beautiful, it tastes great. You can look up different recipes. I may try to post one on my description here if I can. Um, but beet soup is a great one. Dumplings and uh, pickled veggies, pickled everything. And that area, pickling is a big thing, so uh, pickles. So all of those would be fun things to eat for week 14 that tie into the area that you're learning about and uh, would kind of bring some of these things home to our kiddos in a real tangible way. All right, I think that is everything for week 14. Of course, you could read the week 14 Old World Echoes and um, other books related to this week that you can check out from the library. I will link some of those in the description below as well. Uh, for a list of some good ideas. But other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic week 14, and I look forward to seeing you again for week 15 next week. Bye.